Hey, Pam Tillis. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on WTOP Radio in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. And uh, we're talking because you're coming to the Rams head in Annapolis, which is right, you know, right down the road from D.C. on Sunday, December 11th. And you're calling it the Bells and Bows Tour, uh, country yeah. hits and Christmas favorites. So I guess that yeah. says it all. But so we're going to hear some of our favorite songs of yours from over the years, as well as some stuff that are tied with the season, I guess. That's right. And, and, and I'd like to explain the, the name of it, the holiday tour. Bells is, is you know, it's an all-female trio. And uh, they're incredible musicians. They sing, a lot of my records have female harmony. So I needed to get, you know, great singers and players. Uh, and they, they, they really truly are talented young women that I'm bringing with me. And, and then the bows are the, the fiddle and violin that, that is so prevalent in my acoustic trio. And I've got a wonderful pianist and yeah, so you uh, you set it up pretty good though. I'm going to be doing a lot of my country hits, and uh, and then some Christmas songs. And I get into, you know, Christmas is such a nice. We do the same show all year long. I mean, we change it up a little bit, but you know, I've been doing a lot of the same songs now for since the '90s, and uh, so Christmas is always a chance to kind of uh, uh, do something a little bit different, a little bit outside the box. So. Definitely. Well, you know, the, the bells, uh, it's a double meaning, you know, we got jingle double bells meaning. and then That's bell, right. B-E-L-L-E-S right. yes, for the, the trio of singers. See it it all works. It all, I see. Oh, I, yeah. We're seeing how you're doing. Um, <laughs> always double meanings. All right, cool. Well, and I know, I guess, gosh, I know you had a, that one Christmas album, um, what, 15 years ago or something called Just In Time For Christmas. Was, was yeah. that the only one you've ever done or there, is there another one? You know, we just did, um, we just released a Christmas single. Uh, I collaborated with a pianist by the name of Corey Cottle. He's an amazing, amazing uh, player. And um, yeah, we just did a version of uh, Christmas Time Is Here, the old Charlie Charlie Brown of course. Uh, the song, which we'll be doing. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorites. And it just came out on Spotify on Thanksgiving Day. So check it out, y'all. Awesome. So we'll hear that. And uh, you want to toss out another Christmas song title or two that we might hear if we come to the Rams head? Uh, let me think. Yeah. Um, uh, well, let's see. Um, I've got a version of Three Ships, uh, the uh, Celt kind of a Celtic flavored thing. And uh, I'll be home for Christmas. And, and some things that you might not have heard before. I mentioned Christmas time is here. Um uh, that one of my favorites written by a friend of mine, Ashley Cleveland, who is a former dove. Uh, she's a Christian rock artist. Uh, she wrote a song called Walk Through Bethlehem that BJ Thomas did years ago. I think oh, Trisha would have covered it. Thomas, rest in peace. Yeah, right, right. But we do a version of it as well. And, uh, right. and, uh, put a little love in your heart, the old uh, Jackie to Shannon song. So, yeah, we gotta, we gotta, a very, you know, my music is, I throw in a lot of elements. I love all genres. I'm kind of an equal opportunity, uh, uh, you know, in terms of, of uh, uh oh, did I miss you? No, I got it. Yeah, you're different, equal opportunity, different genres and styles that we're going to hear. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, um, thanks for teeing up the concert. Whenever I have, uh, you know, a country legend on like yourself, I love to sort of hear your your superhero origin story. <laughs> I know you're born in Florida, but you grew up. You grew up mostly in Nashville, is that right? I did. Uh, Dad moves moved us here. My mom and I. I was just a little bitty baby, and and I grew up in Nashville in this incredible creative community, and and um, it just kind of rubbed off on me, and so I've been kind of following in his footsteps for many, many years now. And didn't you, didn't you, um, well, of course we mentioned, you know, you're, we, we got to mention who your famous dad was. Right, my daddy, Mel Tillis, my daddy of Mel, course. Yeah, <laughs> Don't undersell Mel that Tillis, part. <laughs> the one and only. And uh, yeah, we, we talk about him a little bit in the show too, but yeah. So um, yeah, I just grew up surrounded by it and I fell in love with it. And I, I never really wanted to do anything, but, but be a singer. So yeah. Before you before know. we get on, I, before I move into your your big hit albums and stuff, real quick, while we're still talking about your dad, because my grandfather will freak out when he found out I'm talking Mel Tillis. <laughs> um, tell, do you have a favorite song of your dad's? And that's hard. It's almost like picking your favorite kid or something. But I ain't never in Good Woman Blues and Coca Cola Cowboy. And there's so oh, many I am so impressed with you. You're a country kid. I am. Oh, really we love impressed. it. But <laughs> but do you have a personal? Yeah, you know, favorite? um. 
Daddy wrote a song for um, for Kenny Rogers, uh, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town. Of and I've always thought that was just a, a master work, you know, just incredible. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for, for shouting that one out to everyone know that Kenny Rogers song. All right, cool. Well, you know, back, now we're bringing it back to, you know, your own journey, because let's face it, you're an amazing artist on your own. Um, So you, I guess, probably thanks to dad, you you were singing on the, the Grand Ole Opry stage at a really young age, right? What what age was it? Uh, I first got to sing on the Opry when I was eight years old. That's crazy. <laughs> and, now I'm a, and now I'm a member, which is really <laughs> incredible. I became... I became the uh, the first woman of the new millennium, and I joined in two thousand. So, oh, that seems is so, like yesterday. So so exciting. Well, so you you're singing on there at a young age. I know you get that record deal, um, that first album, Above and Beyond the Doll of Cute, in what eighty three, and I know you put another, I guess, a single wow. that one of one of those things out in eighty six, which I I guess you re re released it on your later album, but but back then you're it's starting to bubble up. You know, ACM's taking notice, top yeah. new female vocalists, yeah. all that stuff in in the eighties. But tell me about those those early days. You know, um, uh, with that first first album, any good memories? Well, the first the first album was actually a pop record. I thought I was going to be the next Madonna. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I always had a, I always sang a lot of different styles. And actually, as a session singer and a jingle singer, I got a lot of work that wasn't particularly country. You know, I sang a little bit of R and B, and I've sung a little bit of jazz, and and uh, just all different kinds of people call me for all different kinds of things. So my first record was kind of a a pop effort. And um, but, you know, and I've, I've lived in on the West Coast for a little while and uh, just kind of experimented with some different musical styles. But I came back to country because it just really who I am. And my writing was very much a lot more in a country vein. You know, you can dress yeah. it up with pop production, but it was basically uh, much closer to the country music style of writing that I'd grown up around. So yeah, I came back and, and it was the right thing. And another reason I kind of went off on a tangent for a long time is uh, it just felt like country music was in this place, you know, it changes all the, the flavor, the styles changed all the time. And for a while, I, I wasn't really, I don't know. I wasn't into the sound at the time when I was a teenager. I was much more into rock, and it seemed like my dad's music. You know, you know, right, my right. dad is old people music, <laughs> and it took me a while to really appreciate. You know, when sometimes you overlook what's in your own backyard, right? And uh, and then once, once you know, once I kind of I don't know, it slowly dawned on me how how rich my my roots you know how how incredible and um uh, i just started tuning back into it in a whole different way and i started paying attention to everything i tried to ignore for so long and anyway it worked out and it's not the style of country radio was changing as well yeah and and all of a sudden there were people like dwight yokum and a group called foster and lloyd and yeah uh, Bakersfield you know, sound I, coming in a little bit. With, yeah, and and you know it was kind of a mix, a, a little bit of a, a a rock and roll cool attitude mixed mm -hmm. in with country music. And you know when I saw people like the Eagles and Emmy Lou Harris and people I thought were so hip, you know, and they were idolizing the stuff I'd grown up around. I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I've been missing something. So, <laughs> maybe anyway. that was it, the old Wizard of Oz. Like you said, your own backyard. Maybe I need That's to look right. in my own uh, house. Maybe this, maybe this stuff is way cooler than I thought. Maybe my dad was on to something. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, we're we're glad that you did because I know, like you're saying, there was like a little hiatus there in the '80s, but then in come early '90s, you did put yourself in my place with that very hit song. Tell me about um, "Don't Tell Me What to Do." Uh, how how did that song? Did you write that one, or or who wrote that one? No, uh, that, well, that was, was Harlan by, Howard and Max uh, Barnes. Harlan Howard and Max Barnes Jr. Harlan Howard uh, wrote my dad's as 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 prolific as my dad was with his songwriting. His very first number one record was a Harlan Howard record. Mm -hmm. So it just worked out. It was just fate that that it happened that way. But uh, yeah, that was a song about 
being hard headed and it seemed to fit. <laughs> so that fit, that was, you were so hard headed yeah. about wanting to do country. So there you go. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, I was hard headed about doing whatever the heck I wanted to do at the time. Back then, and yeah. so, uh, but you know, it, it, it fit the attitude was right for the times, although it was very simply told there again, straight up, no frills, country songwriting. And I thought to tell you the truth, I didn't think, I thought, number one, I thought it was too short. It was like a two minutes and 10 seconds. And it was yeah. so simply written. It didn't even have a bridge. And I went, <laughs> is this a hit song? I don't know. I just know I like it. And I just know I love singing it. And I'll be darned it if it wasn't a number one record. So go figure. I love it. I love it. And of course, that same album has, for to me, what is like your all-time song that'll probably echo into eternity, which was Maybe It Was Memphis. I love it. Uh, first first Grammy nomination, I believe, for that one. But um, tell uh, any good stories of being in the recording of Belton that? Because to me, that's one of those great, just open up, like wind your window down in the car or in the shower room. You just belt that song, all of us fans. But uh, what well, you? You you're just, well, I, there's two parts to my answer because you just reminded me of something. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I've been workshopping that song for a long, long time, and um, people would always really respond to it. But I I'd actually re recorded an earlier version of it with a whole different band, and it wasn't that great. But I believed in the song, not to diss the players. It just wasn't. Sure. You know, sometimes magic happens. Sometimes it doesn't. Right. Uh, so the second time we recorded it, the track was so good that I knew I had to just, I just had to bring it. And, and so I can remember it, there was nobody else around, just me and the engine, me and the engineer, Ed C. And, uh, I think we basically turned off all the lights in the studio and, I just, I went some other place, you know, I closed my eyes in the control room, in the, in the vocal booth, and I just let the whole song play out in my mind like a movie. Right. I think it was like, it was like, I, I, I just went there. I was in Memphis when I sang this song. I was in Nashville, <laughs> Tennessee, but in my mind, I was really in Memphis. You transported. Um, that, yeah, I really did tell the transport, and um and I just sang my little heart out and it it worked. So I was so grateful for that. You said there was two parts answers. You said a two part answer. Oh, the second part is, is when you said roll the window down and sing along, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I'd had, so don't tell me what to do. It done well. And, and a couple other singles had, you know, charted really high top, top five, top 10. Uh, Memphis was uh, the last single and you're trying to maintain that momentum and I'm like well you right. know this could all end tomorrow you know you're still nervous uh, for a while you know it takes a while to really uh, get enough hits to feel like you've really made it one one hit won't do it anyway right. so um, anyway I'm rolling down a uh, Harding Place in Nashville Tennessee and I roll up to a red light and I guess that song was on the radio and I looked over and I'm not a, I'm not a big nationwide name at, at yet either, you know, right. but I looked over and there's a gal in the car right next to me. She never saw me and she had her head thrown back and she was, and I could tell what she was singing. I looked over and I realized she was going, <laughs> and she was singing along with it. And I'm like, Oh, I've hit on something. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> when Pantel is the singer of the song, winds down her window and sees someone else singing the song. That's right. You know you've made it. Yeah, <laughs> that's so great. Uh, well, tell me about uh, the next album. I love "Shake the Sugar Tree." I mean, that's just uh, you know some catchy turns of phrases. You know, like a fruit Thank from a thick, pickle vine and sweeten the nick of time. All that good yeah, rhyming a great new, Lady from up New England uh, way. Uh, Chapin Hartford wrote that, but uh, yeah, that was. A, a good one but uh, you know in in uh in regards to your question about i've got a new album that came yeah, yeah. out well it's only like a year and a half old you know maybe close to two years now called looking for a feeling and uh, a little bit of 70s and you know you kind of if it, people can probably figure out you know if you we're talking about having music out in the 80s they so, you know i've been around <laughs> a while no nothing to hide there but yeah. um yeah, but I, you know, a lot of my musical coming of age was uh, during the late 70s um, 
want to mention how sad I am about Christy McVie. I was a complete rabid fanatic, you know, uh, Fleetwood Mac. It's part of my musical DNA too. And anyway, um, but yeah, so I had some seventies influences on, on this looking for a feeling record and, and I'd kind of not been writing a lot over the last, you know, there was a period of time when I wasn't writing as much. I was just so busy on the road, but Mm -hmm. uh, a lot more uh, original songs on this record. Um, I think I wrote, I don't know, eight out of 11. And um, yeah, so uh, it's just a a fun little patchwork of, of styles and stories. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for teasing the the new album. It's called Looking for a Feeling, you said. All right, cool. Um, and thank and thank you for indulging us on some deep dives into a couple of those hits. Um, I know we're up against the clock, so we won't we won't go through all of them, but I want to tell our listeners for posterity, you have to check out all the stuff when you walk in the room, me, Vina Loca, in between dances deep down, all the good ones are thank gone, you, same thank all, you. the whole the whole thing. Everyone go check those out. Thank um, you. But I really, really appreciate you joining us. And um, uh, everyone check out Pam Tillis at the Rams head in Annapolis on Sunday, December 11th. Uh, any any final plug for that show? Like talk to talk directly to the listeners and say, come on out. It's going to be a good time. Come on out. I promise. I mean, it's always a good time there. We've been there several times. It's a, it just has a great vibe. There's a reason that it's been around as long as it has been. And uh, like I said, you'll love my you'll love my trio and. And uh, it's, you know, my show is pretty down to earth, a lot of stories. And, and uh, um, yeah, so come on down. We'll, we'll, sh- we'll share a cup of cheer. Uh, <laughs> I want to mention that I've got a, a holiday single out. I think I said it, but I'll say it again. came out on Spotify, Thanksgiving Day. And it's, I think I told you about it, but I'm telling you about it again. Because if you put it on, sip some eggnog, and then look up how far it is from you to the ram's head and and, and and that's how quickly you can be down there and hang out with us. So come on down. <laughs> perfect. Perfect teaser. Hey, Pam Dillis, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to talk to you.